أكبر محمد وآل محمد صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل Brothers, just before we start Dua Kamel, if I can just ask you just to move t- as far to your right as possible and far forward as possible, just so that the latecomers, when they come in, they have space to sit in the, in the back. Please recite salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قهرت بها كل شيء وخذ عليها كل شيء وذل لها كل شيء وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملأت كل شيء وبسلطانك الذي على كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعد فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملأت أركان كل شيء وبعلمك الذي حات بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي أضاله كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحتك العسم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تغير النعم اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب أذنبت وكل خطية أخطأتها اللهم إني أتقرب إليك بذكرك وأستشبك إلى نفسك وأسألك بجودك أن تدنيني من قربك وأن توزعني شكرك وأن تلهمني ذكرك اللهم إني أسألك سؤال خاضع متذلل خاشع أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضيا قانعا وفي جميع الأحوال متواضعا اللهم وأسألك سؤال من اشتدت فاقته وأنزل بك عند الشدائد حاجته وعدم فيما عندك رغبته اللهم عظم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفي مكرك وذهر أمرك وغلب قهرك وجرت قدرتك ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك اللهم لا أجد لذنوبي غافرا ولا لكبائح ساترا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيح بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك وبحمدك ظلمت نفسي وتجرأت بجهلي وسكنت إلى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك عليه 
اللهم مولاي كم من قبيح سترت وكم من فادح من البلاء قلت وكم من عثار وقيت وكم من مكروه دفعت وكم من ثناء جميل لست وهلا له نشرت اللهم عظم بلائي وفرت بي سوء حالي وقسرت بي عمالي وقعدت بي أغلالي وحبسني عنا في بد أملي وخدأتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بجنايتها ومطالي يا سيدي فأسألك بعزتك أن لا يحجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفزحني بخفي ما اتلعت علي من سري ولا تعاجلني بالعقوبة على ما عملته في خلواتي من سوء فعلي ويساتي ودوام تفريتي وجهالتي وكثرة شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال روفا وعلي في جميع الأمور عتوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ذري والنظر في أمري إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكم اتبعت في هوى نفسي ولم أحترز فيه من تزيين عدوي فغرني بما أهوى وأسعده على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزت بما جرى علي من ذلك بعد حدودك وخالفت بعد أوامرك فلقى الحمد علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجة لي فيما جرى علي فيه قضاؤك وألزمني حكمك وبلاؤك وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعد تقصيري وإسرافي على نفسي معتذرا نادما منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيبا مقرا مذعنا معترفا لا أجد مفرا مما كان مني ولا مفزعا أتوجه إليه في أمري غير قبولك أذري وإدخالك إياي في ساعة من رحمتك اللهم فاقبل أذري وارحم شدة ذري وفكني من شد وثاقي يا رب ارحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدا خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتغذيتي هبني لابتداء كرمك وسالف برك بي يا الهي وسيدي وربي اتراك معذبي بنارك بعد توحيدك وبعد من توى عليه قلبي من معرفتك ولهج بي لساني من ذكرك وتقده ضميري من حبك وبعد صدق اعترافي ودعائي خاذيا لربوبيتك هيهات أنت أكرم من أن تضيع من ربيت أو تبعد من أدنيت أو تشرد من آويت أو تسلم إلى البلاء من كفيته ورحمت 
وليت شعري يا سيدي وإلهي ومولاي أتسلط النار على وجوه خرت لعظمتك ساجدة وعلى ألسن نطقت بتوحيدك صادقة وبشكرك مادحة وعلى قلوب اعترفت بإلهيتك مهققة وعلى ذمائر حوات من العلم بك حتى صارت خاشعة وعلى جوارح سعة الأوطان تعبدك الطائعة وأشارت باستغفارك مذعنا ما هكذا الذنوبك ولا أخبرنا بفضلك عنك يا كريم يا ربي وأنت تعلم ضعفي عن قليل من بلاء الدنيا وقوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها على أن ذلك بلاء مكرو قليل مكسو يسير بقاؤه قصير مدته فكيف احتمالي لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وقوع المكاره فيها وهو بلاء تطول مدته ويدوم مقام ولا يخفف عن أهله لأنه لا يكون إلا عن غذبك وانتقامك وسخطك وهذا ما لا تقوم له السماوات والأرض يا سيدي فكيف لي وأنا عبدك الضعيف الذليل الحقير المسكين المستكين يا إلهي وربي وسيدي ومولاي لأي الأمور إليك أشكو ولما من هذه جوابك لأليم العذاب وشدتي أم لطول البلاء ومدتي فلئن سيرتني للأقوبات مع عدائك وجمعت بيني وبين أهل بلائك وفرقت بيني وبين أحبائك وأوليائك فهبني يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي وربي صبرت على عذابك فكيف أصبر على فراكك وهبني يا إلهي صبرت ولا حر نارك فكيف أصبر عن النذر إلى كرامتك أم كيف أسكن في النار ورجائي عفوك فبعزتك يا سيدي ومولاي أقسم صادقا لئن تركتني ناتقا لا ذي الجنة إليك بين أهلها دجيج الآملين ولا أسرخن إليك سراخ المستزرخين ولا أبكين عليك بكاء الفاقدين ولا أنادي أنك أين كنت يا ولي المؤمنين يا غاية أمال العارفين يا غياث المستغيثين يا حبيب قلوب الصادقين ويا إله العالمين أفتراك سبحانك يا إلهي وبحمدك تسمع فيها صوت عبد مسلم سجن فيها بمخالفتك وذاقت عما وذاقت عما عذابها بمعصيتي وحبس بين أطباقها بجرمه وجريرتي 
وهو يذج إليك دجيج مؤمل لرحمتك ويناديك بلسان أهل توحيدك ويتوسل إليك بربوبيتك يا مولاي فكيف يبقى في العذاب وهو يرجو ما سلف من حلمك أم كيف تولمه النار وهو يعمل فضلك ورحمتك أم كيف يحركه لهيبها وأنت تسمع صوته وترى مكانه أم كيف يشتمل عليه زفيرها وأنت تعلم ضعفه أم كيف يتقلقل بين أطباقها وأنت تعلم صدقه أم كيف تسجره زبانيتها وهو يناديك يا رب أم كيف يرجو فضلك في عتقه منها وتتركه فيها هيهات هيهات ما ذلك الذن بك ولا المعروف من فضلك ولا مشبه لما عملت بالموحدين من برك وإحسانك فباليقين أقتو لو لا ما حكمت به من تعذيب جاهديك وقذيت به من إخلاد معانديك لجعلت النار كلها بردا وسلاما وما كان لأحد فيها مقرا ولا مقاما لكنك تقدست أسماءك أقسمت أن تملها من الكافرين من الجنة والناس أجمعين وأن, تخل وأن تخلد فيها المعاندين وأن تجل ثناؤك قلت مبتدعا وتتولت بالإنعام متكرما أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسدا سقن لا يستون إلهي وسيدي فأسألك بالقدرة التي قدرتها وبالقضية التي حتمتها وحكمتها وغلبت من عليه أجريتها أن تهب لي في هذه الليلة وفي هذه الساعة كل جرم أجرمت وكل ذنب أذنبت وكل قبيح أسررت وكل جهل عملته كتمته أو أعلنت أخفيته أو أظهرت وكل سيئة أمرت بإثبات الكرام الكاتبين الذين وكلتهم بحفظ ما يكون مني وجعلتهم شهودا علي مع جوارحي وكنت أنت الرقيب علي من ورائهم والشاهد لما خفي عنهم وبرحمتك أخفيت وبفضلك سترت وأن توفر حذي من كل خير أنزلت أو إحسان فضلت أو بر نشرت أو رزق بسد أو ذنب تغفره أو خطأ تستر يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي ومالك رقي يا من بيده ناسيتي يا علي من بذري ومسكنتي يا خبيرا بفقري وفاقتي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب 
أسألك بحقك وقدسك وأعظم صفاتك وأسمائك أن تجعل أوقات من الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا وبخدمتك موسولة وعمال عندك مقبولة حتى تكون عمالي وأرادي كلها وردا واحدا وحالي في خدمتك سرمدا يا سيدي يا من عليه معولي يا من إليه شكوت أحوالي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب قوي على خدمتك جوارحي واشدل على العزيمة جوانحي وهب لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك حتى أسرح إليك في ميادين السابقين وأسر عليك في البارزين واشتاق إلى قربك في المشتاق وأدنو منك دنو والمخلصين وخافك مخافة الموقنين واجتمع في جوارك مع المؤمنين اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فارد ومن كادني فكيد واجعلني من أحسن عبيدك نصيبا عندك وأقربهم منزلة منك وخصهم زلفة لديك فإنه لا ينال ذلك إلا بفضلك وجد لي بجودك واعتف علي بمجدك واحفظني برحمتك واجعل لساني بذكرك لهجا وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن إجابتك وقلني عثرتي واغفر زلتي فإنك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وأمرتهم بدعائك وذمنت لهم الإجابة فإليك يا ربي نسبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي فبعزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والإنس من أعدائي يا سريع الرضا اغفر لمن لا يملك إلا الدعاء فإنك فعال لما تشاء يا من اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعته غنى إرحام رأس ماله الرجاء وسلاحه البكاء يا سابغ النعم يا دافع النقام يا نور المستوحشين في الظلم يا عالما لا يعلم صل على محمد وآل محمد وافعل بما أنت أهل وصلى الله على رسوله والأئمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا غفور يا رحيم 
أنت الرب الأذيم الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو الصميء البصير وهذا شهر عزمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرست شيامه عليه وهو الشهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلت خير من ألف شهر في عزل مني ولا يمن ألي من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار في من تمن ألي وأدخن للجنة برحمتك يا أمهم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وافترزت على عبادك فيه السيام سلي على محمد وآل محمد ورزقني هج بيتك الحرام في آمي هذا وفي كل يوم واغفر لي تلك الزنوب الإزام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مصدد للصواب بمنك وأيقنت أنك أنت أرحم الراحمين في موضع العفو والرحمة وأشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وأجب يا رحيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من قربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الظل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله فاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يدا الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير ما حاجة بي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير 
اللهم إن أعفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئته وصفحك عن ظلمي وسطرك على قبيه عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فسرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أر مولا كريما أصبر على عبد اللئيم منك علي يا ربي إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فأتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإسباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ضحير يعاضده قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة على نعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يحتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد السائل ولا يخيب آمل الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مجرك الحاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعج السماء وسكانها 
وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على الصبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدن المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل حداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبلك مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته له أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم عزه وعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلا وتظل بها النفاق وأهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعته والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا 
اللهم المن به شعثنا واشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فطقنا وكثر به قلتنا وأعزز به ظلتنا وأغني به عائلنا واقضي به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا واسود به خلتنا ويسر به عصرنا وبيذ به وجوهنا وفك به أصرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وأعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وأعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وأوصع المعطين اشف به صدورنا وأذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهتنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وعنا على ذلك بفضح منك تعجله وبذر تكشفه ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم برحمتك في الصالحين فأدخلنا وفي عليين فارفعنا وبكأس من معين من عين سلسبيل فاسقنا ومن الحور العين برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخذمنا ومن ثمار الجنة والحوم الطير فاطعمنا ومن ثياب السندس والحر والاستبرقي فألبسنا وليلة القاد وحج بيتك الحرام وقتلا في سبيلك فوفق لنا وصالح الدعاء والمسألة فاستجب لنا وإذا جمعت الأولين والآخرين يوم القيامة فارحمنا وبراءة من النار فاكتب لنا وفي جهنم فلا تغلنا وفي عذابك وهوانك فلا تبتلنا ومن الزقوم والضريع فلا تطعمنا ومع الشياطين فلا تجعلنا وفي النار على وجوهنا فلا تكببنا ومن ثياب النار وصرابي للقطران فلا تلبسنا ومن كل سوء يا لا إله إلا أنت بحق لا إله إلا أنت فنجنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم 
المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عن سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل بغيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يتلع الفجر من الليلة هذه ولك قبلك ولك ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني علي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أتكل على أهل الكبور سرور اللهم أقن كل فقير اللهم أشب كل جائك اللهم أكس كل أذيان اللهم أكس دين كل مدين اللهم أفرج كل مكروب اللهم أرد كل غريب اللهم أفوق كل أسير اللهم أسلك كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم أشب كل مريد اللهم أسود فخرنا بكناك اللهم غير سوء أهلنا بحسن أهلك اللهم أكزي الناتين وأكدنا من الفاك إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just before we continue with the program, just another request from the volunteers. Um, space is becoming quite challenging, so if you can just move forward, if there's space in front of you, shift forward with the salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ahsan, thank you. Today, Thursday, the 14th of March 2024, is the eve of the 4th of Mahi Ramadan 1445. You are reminded to kindly keep your mobile phones on silent during the program and always keep your belongings with you at all times. You are requested to please recite Surah Fatsiya for the Ithal al Thawab of the following Marhumin Marhum Muhammad Ghulam Hussein Daya, grandson of Daya Premji in Nazarali of Toronto, who passed away on Tuesday. Marhuma Khair Nisa Abdul Hussein Molu, wife of late Abdul Hussein Abdul Rasul Molu of Mombasa, who passed away and was buried yesterday. Marhum Hassan Lee Hussein Haji Bai Muraj of Karachi who passed away on Sunday and was buried on Monday. Marhum Muhammad Raza Tijani, Marhum Akbar Tijani, Marhuma Rubab Tijani, Marhuma Rehana Karamali Tijani, Marhuma Kulsum Alibai, and all of our Marhumin Al-Fatiha. Announcements for today are as follows. Tomorrow, Friday the 15th of March, Salat al Juma will be prayed at 12.16 p.m. by Sheikh Anwar Jafar. The children's afternoon program will run from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. during weekdays. And the main evening program tomorrow will start at 7.45 p.m. with Darsa, followed by Duas and the lecture by Sheikh Mohammed Jawad Shomali. Al-Hadi Youth Announcements. You are requested to join Al-Hadi Youth tonight after the main program for Dua Night with Sheikh MJ Shomali. This is open to all. And for ladies who are over the age of 18 or 18 and over, on the 15th of March, join us for Duas Under the Stars, a night of reflection and connection under the open skies, which is also after the main program. We're also pleased to announce that our website has been updated to feature the confirmed reciters for the upcoming month of Ramadan. All selected reciters have been contacted. If you have requested participation and haven't received an email after checking your spam and junk folders, please kindly email muki at hujjah.org. Lost with ideas on what to gift your loved ones this Eid? Well, look no further. Come and support our small business showcase. This is the third time running this Ramadan on Saturday, the 23rd of March. For further details, please visit the Hujjah website. A green team message, cut waste, cut costs, bring your own cutlery and save the planet and earn sawab this Ramadan. 
Raffle tickets are also up for sale with some excellent prizes. You can see the treasurer's desk for more details. The Mahi Ramadan Tabaruk and Iftar Fund are also open. Please speak to Brother Sajad Tajani, Sister Nasima by Karim, or the Jamaat office if you would like to sponsor or part sponsor. Your request is to also kindly donate generously for the Hujjat Stanmore refurbishment at the Treasury Desk or online at www.hujjat.org. Finally, a, a car park announcement from the car park volunteering team. You're requested to please leave the key in your car at all times, even if, you are, even if your car is not blocking any other cars. And please do park your car starting from the rear of the car park and not in the front row. Before we have our lecture, just one more time, brothers, just to allow more people to come in and accommodate for space. If I can just request you to please move as far forward as possible with three loud salawats, ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And please kindly welcome Sheikh Muhammad Jawad Shamali with salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear sisters and brothers, السلام عليكم I pray that you're well, inshallah and for those who are not, may inshallah God give them so much energy that they feel better. I thought before we continue with our discussion about how can we get to that point that we can only see beauty in life. There's an elephant in the room we need to address. Yesterday I mentioned the point about Prophet Yusuf saying that when I managed to not commit a sin, it was God who helped me. One of the brothers called offside on that point. So I thought it's good to go to VAR to see what's the situation there. So I was like, it's on my mind, that's actually Prophet Yusuf, and I went and checked. And this is from Majma'ul Bayan, one of the Shia Tafasirs. And over there it says that I can't see it, so let me bring it on my own phone and please recite the salawat. <laughs> so here in Majma'ul Bayan, what the tafsir actually says is that هذا كلام من يوسف عند أكثر المفسرين. So this is actually from Prophet Yusuf. According to the majority of Shia Mufassirin of the Quran. Then he says, Waqila. Waqila usually in this context means there's also another opinion. So first they mention the mainstream opinion. Then they say, Yes, there's also an opinion that huwa min kalam imra'at al aziz, that it's Zulaykha. So the majority of Shia Mufassirin, according to Majma'ul Bayan, they say that it's actually Yusuf who says that line. There are, Allah, to be honest and to be fair to that brother, there are some who say it's Zulaykha. So, for example, uh, in Tafsir Nemune, he thinks that it's Zulaykha who said it. But the interesting point is this. Even in Tafsir Nemune, who says that it's Zulaykha who says it, he doesn't say the sentence is wrong. In fact, one of the challenges he has to prove it's Zulaykha is this sentence is true. How could someone like Zulaykha say a sentiment like that? And he, even Ayatollah Makarim accepts that the sentence is true, that anyone would make mistakes unless it's God's mercy that stops it. So about the point that I was trying to make, there's no disagreement. Even 
with the people who think it was Zuleikha. But as I said, and we look, the majority are saying it's Yusuf. If we could go to the next slide from the VAR. It actually became a blessing because I ended up revisiting, this is the second slide, I ended up revisiting what does Alama Taba Taba'i says. Because that's like one of the most famous tafasir we have al Mizan. So Alama Taba Taba'i also, as you can see, Qawluhu Ta'ala, this phrase, Tatimmatu Kalam Yusuf, is the end of the speech from Yusuf. Then Alam Taba Taba'i says things which he takes it to next level. So I was like, wow, it's really going to enrich our discussion. But let's go to the next slide if it's okay. It's so cool, I'm there too. If I do that, oh, I should do it this way, wow. Allah will come to what it's saying here. I've even put some translation in the next slide. But just before we read what Allah Taba Taba'i says, um, so as you saw, whether the majority who say it's Yusuf or those who say it's Zuleikha, they don't doubt the point. Regardless of who says it, they approve that the sentence which we had, the whole discussion was wrought. At some point, we need to accept if it's not for God's mercy, we have no chance of being saved. So even in those moments where we do good things, it's God's help. So that aside, now let's go and see what Allah says. Allah says, وذلك أن قوله أني لم أخنه بالغائب كان لا يخلو من شائبة دعوة الحول والقوة. He says in the previous verse that according to Allah is also Yusuf. He says I didn't betray, for example, the ruler. I didn't make a mistake. I didn't betray. But he says in this there is an impression that maybe Yusuf is saying I didn't do it. Who? Oh. He says, وَهُوَ مِنَ الْمُخْلَسِينَ الْمُتَوَغِّلِينَ فِي التَّوْحِيدِ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرَوْنَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ لِغَيْرِهِ تَعَالَى حَوْلًا وَلَا قُوَّةً So he says, Yusuf said, I didn't betray. But because Yusuf is such a muwahid in God, so much purified in, in God, that he says, oh, I need to make sure that I clarify when I didn't betray, it wasn't with my own strength. So in the previous verse, he says, then immediately in order to remove the possibility that I did it on my own, he immediately says, So if we go to the next slide, al says, I don't know, can you read it? Well, if you can't, I'll read it for you. Al-Lame says three things Prophet Yusuf is trying to achieve here. The first one, nafi al wal an To say that this hawl al-quwa, it wasn't mine. To not do the wrong thing. Naf, to deny that from himself. Even though he didn't, he said it wasn't me. The second thing, nisbatu ma zahara min, min amal salih aw sifat jamila. To attribute what manifested from him, well, that beautiful action that he was pious, he didn't go for the mistake, or that good attribute inside him, that beautiful quality, he wants to attribute this to God. And so, so far, you know what's happening? This is what I said, that even when we end up doing something good, when you look at someone like Prophet Yusuf or Halab, even we put this aside, you go ask Imam Ali, who did it? You ask anyone, they say, God did it. God gave me the strength. God enabled me to do it. I know, had I been on my own, I would have made mistakes. Which in the dua of the 17th day of month of Ramadan, there's a dua, there's a couple of duas, more than actually a couple. One of them says what? Ilahi la tatrukni ila nafsi It's the same concept. If I'm left to myself for a blink of an eye, I will make up making mistakes. It's the same concept here. The same concept also in Munajat Sha'baniyyah, in which Imam Ali says, Ilahi lam yakun li hawlun. I have no strength to stop this, to, to move away from ma'asiyah unless you give me that love. But there is a third point here, which actually I'm happy we ended up going to the tafasir. 
Because the third point, the Alama takes it really deep. He says another thing Prophet Yusuf is trying to achieve here, or the verse, let's say, is trying to achieve here, Allah regardless of Hassan, who said it. Because both sides agree this is a good point, regardless of who said it. What is this verse trying to achieve? It says, Tasweetu nafsihi bisa'ir al-nufus alati hiya bihasab al-tab ma'ilatun ila al-ahwa ammaratun bisu. So, Allah is saying, by saying this sentence, Prophet Yusuf is also saying, I'm not saying I'm better than the ones who would have made a mistake. Tasweetu nafsihi, equating himself. Saying, I'm the same as those who maybe because of their desires or whatever they may go towards mistakes. God saved me. This is the beautiful point which I think is the spirit of all the prophets of God. If you look at what is the distinction between Shaitan and Adam, Shaitan Iblis introduces himself, his character, in one of the sentences in the Quran, where he says, Ana khayrun min. I'm better than him. This feeling that we're better than someone is an Iblisi qual quality. When you come to the prophets of God, when you come to the Ahlibayt, when you come to the beautiful souls that have been purified by God, when you look at them, you see this person is doing all sorts of beautiful actions. They're pious, they never make a mistake. But when you tell them, are you better? They look at all of these qualities and they say, oh, none of this is mine. It was not my hawla qawwa, God enabled me. So because they give all the credit to God, then there's nothing left inside them to look at, to point at, and say, because of this, I'm better than that person. So if you look, for example, in another verse, Sam says, Asan ibadullah are the ones who don't even want to be superior to anyone else. The fact of superiority is not something that insan wants. For insan, for a beautiful mubahid, there should be only one superior, and that is God. وَآخَرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ Please recite the salawat. Oh, I'm missing myself in full screen. I was very small back then. I was like just here or here. Uh, wow, it's different. I've seen Right is left there. Oh. Now, someone may say, if I can't take ownership of this good that I do, and I, I'm going to give it back to God, then what motivation do I have to do these good actions? Do you think that's a good question? I think that's a valid question someone could ask. You're saying that even in use Prophet Yusuf's case, or some, let's put Prophet Yusuf aside, because someone may say, Kedi Gays. Any other case, let's go to Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Let's go to, for example, um, all of these good people. When you look at them, you say, what have you done? They say, I don't have anything in front of God. You go to Imam Sajjad in Dua Abu Hamza Thumali, say, Imam Sajjad, in front of God, what do you have to offer? He says, nothing. I'm relying on God's mercy. You go to Munajat Shabani, the same thing. You go to Dua Arafah, Imam Hussein in front of God, what do you have? Some relying on God's mercy. As if they're not taking credit for the beautiful actions that comes out of them, then what's the motivation for them to do those beautiful things? Before I address this question, which is a very good question, I want to just say one thing. These people, what do they all have in common? The people we just mentioned, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Or for example, in that story, you must have heard God tells Prophet Musa, come and bring someone that you're better than them. Who does he take? No one. Who Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. These people who all say, God, there's no one in the world I find who's better than me. Even Imam Reza alayhi salam, he said, that one of the signs of an aqil is that they look at the world, they can't find even one person that they're better than. What do all of these people in ha have in common, the ones I just mentioned? These are really awesome people, no? Prophets of God, the Imams. 
Pass, it means they know something we, we don't know. It means that this path they're taking of giving all the good that they find inside themselves back to God is really working for them. Yes, Prophet Musa may say there's no one better than me. He couldn't find anyone better than himself. Even at that dog he didn't take. You remember that story? He even came across a dog. He was like, should I take a dog? Maybe I'm better than a dog. He was like, no. Who said I'm better than that dog? But from our point of view, oh, Prophet Musa was someone that was Kalimullah. The amazing stages these people have reached. Imam Ali alayhi salam. Oof, that level. But it means the people who go down this path, they reach really high places. So I'm telling you this so that we know if we're trying to consider this new path, the people who went this way, these guys have made it. Now, Imam Sajjad in Munajat Khamse Ashab that you can find, and I really recommend if you have time, go through it in the month of Ramadan, the 15 whispered prayers. And there are 15 short ones, each of them maybe a page. You can read one a day. In one of them, Imam says, Ilahi subhanaka ma avyaka turu ala man lamta kundalila, wa ma awba hal haku and the man hadaitahu sabila. Imam Sajjad there says, Bibin, there's two types of paths toward God. There is a person who wants to go himself, ma avyaka turu. The path is going to be narrow. But then there's another person that God is their guide. God takes them. Huwa yatawalla salihin. God is the one who takes care of Salihin. Even, what do we say in Ayatul Kursi? Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumat al-nur. So it says, God is the one who takes them out of darkness to light. So in that line, in Munajat Khamsa Ashar, Imam Sajjad says, those who want to go towards God themselves, the path is narrow, but the one who relies on God, awdha al-haq, everything is so clear. There's, for example, Javad on one side trying to get over one small mistake, a jealousy, I don't know, an anger or a small thing. It takes me 40, 50 years, and at the end of it, I can't. And then there's someone who follows Imam Sajjad, alayhi salam, and in a few years, you look at them, this person is very different. In one moment, a person's destiny could change when you go down this path, when you ask God to take you. So... The difference is a serious difference. If we want to get to that level where Lady Zainab says, I see nothing but beauty, you should know that it's not a way we can achieve by doing these small things that we do. We should rely on God's mercy. And there's a verse in the Quran that because I don't have time today, maybe we'll address it tomorrow or inshallah in another series if they invite me back. Now, please recite the salawat and then we'll go to that question. By the way, salavat is such a special thing. It's so special. Maybe inshallah in another series we talk about salavat. Can I just remind you of something, by the way? How special you are? Honestly, it's such an honor to be able to be with you. And um, there's a book Sheikh Father just recently wrote, I don't know if you've read or not, about ziyara. He mentioned some ahadith about when believers come together for the sake of God. The ahadiths are so precious. Masan, one of them, it says, if two people, two believers go to visit each other for the sake of God, God says, it's almost they've gone ziyara of me. Kamanzar Allah. Yani, it's a very precious thing that believers coming together for no reason other than the sake of God. So it's really an honor to be among you. Now, what question we're trying to address, if I should rely on God, if God's the one who will take me to those high places, what's the point of my actions? Do I stop doing my actions? No. Let me ask you a question. If someone says to you that, you know, for example, the love you show to, so many, we have many couples here who have 
new babies, right? A six-month-old, the one-year-old. If someone tells you this love you're showing to your child is actually a love God put into your heart to show them, does that mean that tomorrow, like, oh, if it's God's love, then I would stop loving them? Would you say that? Or would it not only, it doesn't stop you from wanting to show that love, but it also adds a whole nother dimension to all of your actions. Think about it. You're a mother. It's one of these special nights of Ramadan. Your child is being a little bit, for example, difficult to take care of. That night, you really wanted to go to the mosque. It didn't work out. So... Husband is going, you're at home to take care of the child. You really wanted to go. You did all of your efforts to go. You can't. You're at home now. You're taking care of a child that all it does is that it burps. And sometimes wants food, sometimes burps, sometimes um, you need to change them. That's all the child is offering, really. But you're staying there. You keep waking up. You keep taking care of them. And now someone tells you, for example, Imam Hussein in Dua Arafah comes and tells you, because in Dua Arafah, Imam Hussein says what? God, any love my caretakers showed me, you put in their heart. Pas Alon, you're a caretaker. So according to Dua Arafah of Imam Hussein, the love you're showing to your child is actually God's love that he put in your heart. Oh, let's see if understanding this fact, that the credit of this love, the source of it is God, Will it make you stop it, or will it actually add a whole beautiful dimension to what you're doing? Before knowing this, when you think you're the source of love, you're like, oh, I'm loving this child, but I really wish myself and I, I could go. Yeah, it's a little bit guilty, I want to do more, I'm, I've got to take care of this love, but it's my baby, what can I do? I need to take care of them. Now, every moment that you're with this child, for example, you're really tired, you've had a very busy day, but still you prepare something for them or to change them. Any moment you're doing this, you remember Imam Hussein's words in your mind, like, oh my God, this ability inside me to be so tired. You know, most parents, poor things, have chronic fatigue. Days and days of not sleeping, yet still they get up, yet still they go and care for that baby. If suddenly you remember that Imam Hussein is telling you this is God's love present in your heart. God is showing his beauties through you. Now suddenly it's no longer you taking care of your child. It's that and also every action you do is a manifestation of God's beauty. Every action you do you're showing God to the whole world. Not just that. But within you, now you know what God's love looks like. Other people may have to go to Dua Joshan Kabir to read, for example, that God says, you will keep making mistakes and I will keep forgiving you. But you can feel that inside yourself for your child. We need to go to another Dua to say that God says, I will never give up on you. I'll always be there for you. And you see that, oh my God, God's enabled me to experience a little bit of that with my child. I'm always ready to see how can I care for them. What does she need? What does he need? So not only that beautiful action you don't want to do with less, but now within every moment of it, you get to see how loving God is. Please recite the salawat. One of the beautiful couples, beautiful souls who, you know, they've been listening to lectures about God's love and all of that, they told me, Javad, you know when it finally clicked for us? I said, when? They said our son was going on a camp, which meant for the first time he's going to be away from the house for two, three days. It had never happened. He was always with us at home. And he said, his mother and I, we sat down, my friend is telling me, his mother and I, we sat down thinking, okay, this guy is going to be two days away from the house. What would he need? Okay, maybe it's sunny, let's put sunscreen. What if his nails, this happened, let's put the nail creeper, let's put this, let's put this, let's put this, let's put this. He said, we kept thinking about 
anything that even had one possibility, 1% possibility of happening to this kid, and we thought of it to make sure he's going to be okay. Then he said, at one point, we're like, oh my God. If this is what two human hearts are doing for an Abd of God, then what is the love God has for every single one of us? Just one second in looking at the love God has put in their hearts, they got a glimpse into the love God has for every single one of us. And in so many of Ahadith, this is actually how God introduces himself. Sheikh Fadr actually just recently put a beautiful clip on Instagram. I don't know if you saw or not. It was the story of a mother who was being taken care, care of by his son. And then the son, the guy at some point gets tired. The mother gets old and old and old, and the son uh, the runs out of patience. Well, it's not a nice thing, but we don't want to judge the son either. Because, So at some point, the son is fed up with the mom and takes her and puts her on top of the mountain so that she can't come back. A very beautiful person is sent by God to go and if you want to find out something about me, go and speak to that mother. All of the story is something like this. Go on Sheikh Father's Instagram and check it there. You can see there him telling the actual beautiful story. I just want to give you a glimpse of it, the gist of it. By the time this beautiful person finds his way to the top of the mountain and finds the mother, he says the mother is crying a little bit. He says, what is it? Are you upset that he left you? Well, you know, of course, it's a difficult moment. You took care of this child for all those years. Now he got tired of you, left you on top of the mountain and went. He says, no, no, I'm just worried that by the time my son left me here, he was going back, it was getting dark. And I'm worried, what if he gets hurt on the way? He's going down the mountain, something happens to him. And do you see this love of a mother? I don't care, you left me here, it's okay. I just hope you're fine. And then in that story, they say, God says, my love for my Ibad is way more than that mother's love for the child. Pass when I'm telling us that, oh, let's not take ownership of the good God shows us. I'm not saying let us stop doing the good things. No, I'm saying let's do all of that and look at them as ways in which we can experience God's beauty. So if you're a mother who's taking care of your children, you don't need to stop. No, but appreciate it even more. You thought so far it's your love for your children. Now you know it's yours and God's. You're a father trying to get up in the morning to go and make a good living for your family. When I tell you rely on God, doesn't mean stop going to work. I mean, no, now that even when you wake up in the morning to go, know that God gave you that energy. Give the energy, give the beauty that you have right now. Give it back to God. And what happens is that then God gives you a million times more. This is the secret shortcut to reach to levels that right now for many of us is only imaginary. But I've seen it. It's real. If I hadn't seen people who reach these levels, I wouldn't have shared it. And don't think those people are special. Every single one of you is special. Insan is special. Any level, any person has reached, it's also available for us. Now, please recite the salawat. Reza called me a few days ago. Reza is my brother. Although some of you may know Dige, Reza has a disability for many years now, which got really worse this year. One of the um, Masalan challenges we had this year was to making sure that we can take care of him, be there for him. He can't get Vuzu himself. He's very serious about his Salawo, even though it's very difficult for him. He makes sure he does his Salaw on time, all of that. But he needs help to get Vuzu. So his wife brings the water, then he needs to get his hand and put it there and bring it down. So a few nights ago, Rizzo calls me and says, um, Javad, I was getting wuzu, and I was like, there's nothing to brag about there, bro. I get wuzu too, like, chill. He's like, no, no, listen, there's, there's something there. So he says, I was trying to get wuzu, and when he's going down to do the mass, 
Someone needs to help him down, and also someone needs to help him come up and get his hand, help him there. He says, when I went down from, like, on the chair to do my mass, I fell. And he said, I fell in at an angle that they couldn't get me up. His wife didn't have the strength. So he's on the floor in a position which he himself was saying, and I'm quoting, a weird position. And for an hour he's there because his wife doesn't have the strength to bring him up. So she's going out again. Last time it had happened outside, but this time it happened inside the house. She's going to get one of the neighbors, get one of the men to come help him on the wheelchair. And I said, John, I want to tell you how I felt when I was on the floor. I was like, Reza John, tell me. That's beautiful information to have. I said, John, I was very happy. I was like, what do you mean, Reza? He says, Javad, before I thought, I'm praying. I was telling God, God, I'm getting my wuzu. I'm praying to show you how much I love you. But now God has shown me that even that strength, okay, we think it's all ours to put the water there. No, he said, Javad, I can clearly see that wasn't my strength. I'm trying to do it. I can't. Now I can clearly see la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But now I realized all this time that I was going to pray. It wasn't I who was doing something for God. It was God who was enabling me to go towards Him. Khubriza, Alan, what? You think God's stopping you from going towards Him? He said, no, I don't think that, Jabba. I think He thinks I'm very special. What do you mean by that? He says, Javad, when I'm on the floor, I feel like God is really counting on me. What do you mean? He says, you know, it's really difficult to be patient in that moment. And God's given me that patience. God is trying to show me and the people around me what a human soul is capable of going through and still being happy. He said, now finally I realized how special a human soul is. He said, Wallah al-Azim, I had not even for a second in all that one hour waiting for someone to lift me, be even a little bit upset. I was so happy. I was like, this was a body God's given me. Now it's got some issues. But I know God has given this body to me because he knew how strong my soul is, that no matter what challenge the body is going through, still the soul is happy. I said, Reza, in that moment, what were you telling God? Did you tell him, can it end? He said, Javod, you won't believe it. You know what I told God? I told him, do more even if you want. Are you happy with me? If you're happy with me, I'm happy. Give me more. Through me, you're trying to show how strong a human soul is. How powerful it is that it can handle any challenge. Oh, show me more. I was like, Reza, you really said that to God? He says, yes. I was like, your name really is chosen correctly. And now I want to take us to the Ashura. What is this beauty Lady Zainab is seeing on the day when his brother, his brother's so many of his family members in front of him. What he is seeing is the beauty of human soul and how much it can reflect God's beauty to the world. You have a group of people, you know the reports say on the day of Ashura, as they're getting more cuts on their body, their faces are lighting up. This is a body that was a gift of God. Nothing is going to stop us. As their bodies were getting caught, their faces are lighting up. One of them says, we'll almost see our place in heaven. They are showing the beauty of human soul. Even on the floor, it's so powerful. A person comes when Imam Hussein is towards those last moments. Imam Hussein is on the, on the ground. It's obvious that he's 
going to be killed. Someone comes to finish Imam's life. Imam tells him, you don't do it. Baby, just look at this. He says, baby, they're going to kill me anyway. If you want me killed, they're going to kill me. But you don't do it. It's going to be a shame for your tribe. I don't want your tribe to get in trouble. I don't want your tribe to have the blame of having killed me. You go, let another person come. Okay, what is this in son that on the ground, few moments before getting killed, he's still thinking about the person who wants to kill him. What is this beauty? This is what I'm saying we can achieve if we find out who we are. And inshallah, tomorrow we'll speak about this more. And maybe just let's ask God, God, it seems like we have forgotten who we are. It seems like we have forgotten how much you're counting on us. The high levels you're hoping we achieve. We want to be like Lady Zainab too. We want to be like Imam Hussein alayhi salam too. They told us it's possible. Allow us to, to want it. To want to wake up. To want to reach these levels. And also to know that if we want to get there, the only way is by counting on you, not ourselves. Let's end with a salawat. Tawajju ziyara. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا وارث آدم صفوة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كليم الله السلام عليك يا وارث عيسى روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث علي أمير المؤمنين ولي الله السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المصطفى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور أشهد أنك قد أقمت الصلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونهيت عن المنكر وأطأت الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليقين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلماتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرضيت به يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأصلاب الشامخة والأرحام المطهرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مدلهمات ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دعائم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التقي الرزي الزكي الهادي المهدي وأشهد أن الأئمة من ولدك كلمة التقوى وأعلام الهدى والعروة الوثقى والحجة على أهل الدنيا وأشهد الله وملائكته وأنبياءه ورسله أني بكم مؤمن وبإيابكم موقن بشرايع ديني وخواتيم عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وعلى أجسادكم وعلى أجسامكم وعلى شاهدكم وعلى غائبكم وعلى ظاهركم وعلى باطنكم زيارة حضرة علي أكبر عليه السلام 
السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن الحسين الشهيد السلام عليك أيها الشهيد وابن الشهيد السلام عليك أيها المظلوم وابن المظلوم لعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرزيت به زيارة شهداء كربلاء عليه السلام السلام عليكم يا أولياء الله وأحباءه السلام عليكم يا أصفياء الله وأوداءه السلام عليكم يا أنصار دين الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار رسول الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار أمير المؤمنين السلام عليكم يا أنصار فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي محمد الحسن بن علي الولي الناسح السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي عبد الله بأبي أنتم وأمي طبتم وطابت الأرض التي فيها دفنتم وفزتم فوزا عظيما فيا ليتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم جلالة حزة عباس عليه السلام السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك أيها العبد الصالح مطيع لله ولرسوله وأشهد أنك قد جاهدت ونصحت وصبرت حتى أتاك اليقين لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين وألحقهم بدرجك الجهيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى التسعة المأسومين من ذريتك علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة بن الحسن عجل الله فرجك وسهل الله مخرجك وظهورك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقاعدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Brothers, uh, if you can please be seated, the volunteers would like to serve Tabaruk. Please be seated so the volunteers can serve Tabaruk. Ahsant.
Brothers, please be seated. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. Brothers who are still standing, you are delaying Tabarak from being served. If you can please be seated so that Tabarak can be served. Please be seated. Ahsan. Well, there's just a quick announcement for those who are staying for the Al Hadi Youth Dua Night. Just a reminder that both the ladies and the gents will stay in their respective halls for the program. And the program should start at 10.25 p.m. So the Dua Night will start at 10.25 p.m.
صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Um, if everyone could please sit down, inshallah, we'll be starting in two minutes. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Um, welcome all to the first um, Al Hadi event for Maha Ramzan. Um, we have quite a few events going on as well. So please, we, we have a WhatsApp group, um, even on Instagram. If you have any questions, do ask us. Um, if anyone is also parked in rugby, we'll be closing up after. So there's no worries with that. And with that, please, can we welcome Brother Muntazir for Quran? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Kaf ha ya ayn sad Dhikr rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya Idh nada rabbahu nidaan khafiya Qala rabbi inni wahana al-azmu minni Washta'ala al-ra'su shayba Walam akum bidu'aika rabbi shaqiyya Wa inni khiftu al-mawaliya min warai Wa kanat imra'ati aqira فهب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب واجعله ربي رضيا يا زكريا إنا نبشرك بغلام اسمه يحيى لم نجعل له من قبل سميا قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وكانت امرأتي عاقرا وقد بلغت من الكبر عتيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين وقد خلقتك من قبل ولم تك شيئا قال رب جعل لي آية قال آيتك ألا تكلم الناس ثلاث ليال سويا فخرج على قومه من المحراب فأوحى إليهم أن سبحوا بكرة وعشيا يا يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا وحنانا من لدنا وزكاة وكان تقيا 
وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ جَبَّارًا عَصِيًّا وسلام عليه يوم ولد ويوم يموت ويوم يبعث حيا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد مناجاة إمام علي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك الأمان يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم وأسألك الأمان يوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا وأسألك الأمان يوم يعرف المجرمون بسيماهم فيؤخذ بالنواصي والأقدام وأسألك الأمان يوم لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق وأسألك الأمان يوم لا ينفع الظالمين معذرتهم 
وأسألك الأمان يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله وأسألك الأمان يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته بني لكل امرئ من غام يوم إذن شأن يغني وأسألك الأمان يوم يود المجرم لو يفتدي من عذاب يوم وصاحبته وأخي وفصيلتي التي تؤوي ومن في الأرض جميعا ثم ينجي كلا إنها لضا نزاعة للشوم مولاي يا مولاي أنت المولى وأنا العبد إلا المولى مولاي يا مولاي أنت المالك وأنا المملوك وهل يرحم المملوك مولاي يا مولاي أنت العزيز وأنا الذليل وهل يرحم الذليل إلا العزيز مولاي يا مولاي أنت الخالق وأنا المخلوق وهل يرحم المخلوق إلا الخالق مولاي يا مولاي أنت العظيم وأنا الحقيق وهل يرحم الحقير إلا العظيم مولاي يا مولاي أنت القوي وأنا الضعيف وهل يرحم الضعيف إلا القوي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الغني وأنا الفقير وهل يرحم الفقير إلا الغني 
مولاي يا مولاي أنت المعطي وأنا السائل وهل يرحم السائل إلا المعطي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الحي وأنا الميت وهل يرحم الميت إلا الحي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الباقي وأنا الفاني وهل يرحم الفاني إلا الباقي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الدائم وأنا الزائل وهل يرحم الزائل إلا الدائم مولاي يا مولاي أنت الرازق وأنا المرزوق وهل يرحم المرزوق إلا الرازق مولاي يا مولاي أنت الجواد وأنا البخيل وهل يرحم البخيل إلا الجواد مولاي يا مولاي أنت المعافي وأنا المبتلى وهل يرحم المبتلى إلا المعافي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الكبير وأنا الصغير وهل يرحم الصغير إلا الكبير مولاي يا مولاي أنت الهادي وأنا الضال وهل يرحم الضال إلا الهادي مولاي يا مولاي أنت الرحمن وأنا المرحوم وهل يرحم المرحوم إلا الرحمن مولاي يا مولاي أنت السلطان وأنا الممتحن وهل يرحم الممتحن إلا السلطان مولاي يا مولاي أنت الدليل وأنا المتحير وهل يرحم المتحير إلا الدليل مولاي يا مولاي أنت الغفور وأنا المدنين أنت الغفور وأنا المذنب وهل يرحم المذنب إلا الغفور مولاي يا مولاي 
أنت الغالب وأنا المغلوب وهل يرحم المغلوب إلا الغالب مولاي يا مولاي أنت الرب وأنا المربوب وهل يرحم المربوب إلا الرب مولاي يا مولاي أنت المتكبر وأنا الخاشع وهل يرحم الخاشع إلا المتكبر مولاي يا مولاي ارحمني برحمتك وارض عني بجودك وكرمك وفضلك يا ذا الجود والإحسان والطول والامتنان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ابروان I am very honored that uh, next to all of you beautiful souls we get to reflect on the beautiful words of Munajat Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam and I think we all agree what a beautiful recitation that was so let's recite the salawat for our brother. I'm thinking of finding a way to convince him to have some light shooter in classes for me to be able to recite like him, mashallah. He's gonna hate me for saying that, mashallah. Such a humble brother, which is making it even more fun to say these things, because I know he's suffering right now. Um, I want to turn this into an interactive thing. Um, before we start, I want to see, would anyone like to share like in two, three words, what was the vibe they were getting from the Munajat? Would anyone like to share or feeling a little bit shy? We just listen to this. What's the vibe you're getting? If you want to say in a few words. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. What else? Reflection. Very good. Sense of vulnerability. Very beautiful. Anyone else? Sorry? The beauty of Allah's names. Ah, Santum. Very good. Anyone else would like to? The, we are nothing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I don't know why. Is it just me? I feel very heavy. The vibe is very heavy. I want to break it a little bit if it's okay. We'll make it heavy again towards the end, right? Because for reflection, we need to a little bit lighter mode. So we're, So with your permission, I'm going to break the heaviness of the vibe a little bit so we can think freely. Then at the end, we'll make it heavy and go through the, a few phrases of the dua again. 
So in that spirit, please recite salawat. If I talk a little bit serious for a few minutes, like I feel like the world may end. It's not natural. One of the beautiful things, alhamdulillah, the coincidences, or actually it's the work of God, this year, it wasn't actually in my mind to discuss this dua, munajat. Last year, if you remember, we came and we discussed what? The dua Abu Hamza Thumali, for those who came or watched online. This year, the brother suggested munajat Amirul Mu'mini. Then I was like, what a brilliant idea. And actually, it fits so well with the discussions we've been having in the talk series. What was the theme, the main theme of the lecture series for those who are following? We're saying that in our journey towards God, we need to start realizing that we should rely on Him. Otherwise, we're gonna have a very long, difficult way. And I feel like the main message of this monajat is also the same thing. But, of course, with another dimension. The monajat, you can almost say, has two main parts. The first part, let me bring as well, so we read some of the lines. The first part, uh, even you can see the mode changes, Dige, when you get to later on, it says, for example, uh, I'm this, you're that, and who's gonna show mercy apart? So it's got that dynamic. Later on, Masalan, we have antalqawi wa anadha'if. But before it gets to this part, you have a few um, sentences which paints a scene. Let's go into that scene. What, what, what is this? Allahumma inni as'aluka al-aman yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun. So it's speaking about a day in which if Jabod's gathered wealth or I don't know whatever, he realizes that all these things I gathered are not helping me here. It's that kind of day. And it's a day in which many people will be shocked. I worked so many years. But now I'm here in a place, it seems like I don't have the thing I need here. But just to give you a glimpse of what this feels like, I remember once for Ayyam Fatimiye, uh, Zahra and I were invited to go to uh, Kenya. We arrived there, the first thing I remembered was, oops, we didn't bring any dollars to exchange to get money. I taken my card with me, and then I arrived there and said, you know what, it's not gonna be an easy thing, getting money out of your credit card. So I was like, okay, we're in a new country. We have so much money in our account, but we forgot to bring some of it with us. Well, a blessed thing, we had to find a way to get money. But for, for one moment, it was such an interesting feeling. Hey, I thought I have money, I can do whatever I want. But now I'm in a place in which that money cannot be accessed and I can't even get water for my wife or water, she can't get anything for me. It's like that feeling of everything I had has not come with me here. This is the kind of vibe the Munajat is telling us. That yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun. You may have collected things in dunya, now you've come to akhirah, you realize eh, it's not coming with me. I need certain other things here. I said, and what is one of the things Munajat says you need? Qalbin salim. A heart that's salim, a good heart. Now, these people who realize this, the Imam continues with painting that scene. Okay, you're there, Masalan Akhirah, you've realized that your, the things you'd collected are not helping you. What do these people do? And it's, it's a challenge, Dige. Must I imagine Javad's in Kenya, he doesn't have any money. What would he do about it now? That's the question here. Okay, you're now in Akhira, 
You realize the money you collected in dunya is not helping you there. What's your approach now as a problem solver? What do you want to do about it? The Munajat says the majority of people here, or another part which is very interesting, it says what? Yawadul Mujrimu Lau Yaftadi Men Azab Yauma Even Bibani Wasahibatihi Wa Ahi. It's very, very strange. Or even, وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِي Yani it says on that day, these people who realize that, um, can we actually bring the, the slides so people can also see, or is that going to be a little bit difficult? Because I want you to see, so we can paint this picture of, what is the first thing that comes to these people's minds of what should we do? Because the solution lies in doing the opposite of that. Okay? So if we can just bring the, from the part that says, يَوْمَ يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And if you can't tell it's okay, I'll, I'll translate it again. It says on that day, a person is ready to مثلاً, say, I don't want to be punished. مثلاً, can the punishment go on my child? Can it go on my friend? And you're basically willing to sacrifice anyone, even it says, man fil just so they can save themselves. Because they've realized what they've brought wasn't enough. And now their way out is, I'm just thinking about myself. I want to save myself. Forget about everyone else. So there's two problems here. Number one, yes. Oh, it came, beautiful. Uh -huh. By sac, they want to get away by sacrificing their children, the near of kin, and all of this, even Everyone that's in this, maybe they can be fine. Maybe they can be safe. Look, their approach still, and it has we have two mistakes there. One is, I don't have what I need here. And number two, let me now solve this, fix this, by putting other people into problem. And God says, that's not going to work. You can't get others in trouble to get yourself out. Hope now we can go back to my beautiful face. Thank you so much for putting that up. There we go. Hello. I want to say that I want to give us a, another way of looking at this. To see how much we're stuck in this, by the way, y'all. This thing, it's not about some point in the future. I don't know if you were in one of the lecture series we discussed that Akhira is not like later in time. Akhira is happening even right now, but most people don't see it after they die, they see it. I say you must have even heard that hadith, the Prophet says, um, if you eat the money of an orphan, it's like eating fire. At that very moment, you can't see it, but your soul is eating fire. Or even in the Quran, God says, Most people only see the surface of dunya, but they're not aware of the depth. So what I'm trying to say now is just for a second, imagine this. That all of these things that we read about that way, at some level, it's happening even right now. What am I trying to say? It's not just later on that you realize, hey, this job, this position, these things didn't help me. Even today, if we pay attention, 
we realize all the things we collected in life has not been enough to feed our soul. Has not given us that قلب سلیم. How do we know that? We know that by all the insecurities our heart has. The fears it has. The challenges it has. You see people living in the best houses, but they're not happy about it. The most perfect, accomplished partners, but sometimes they can't appreciate one another. خب, پس دت یو ملا ینفع و مالون و لابنون at some point we see it very clearly. But at some level, even today it's happening. As in the whole lecture series we gave is what? The reason we can't enjoy the beauties of life like Lady Zainab, it's because that thing which our heart and soul needs, we're not giving it to him. Does that make sense, by the way? And did I manage to, to say that even right now we're in this stage? If anyone has questions, please let me know, because I know it's a new angle. And I want us for these first few lines that people are ready to sacrifice each other to save themselves. To know even that's today, y'all. Huh? That's today. Can okay, imagine if as a father, I'm having a difficult day, I shout at my family member to make myself feel better, not knowing that along with this shouting, you're trying to make their life difficult. And yeah, I don't know, I'm sacrificing my children's well-being to save myself. Or for example, I see Alan, I need to go and help my partner, I don't. I'm ready to sacrifice their well-being for myself. Or the interesting thing is even in healing places, healing circles, a person says, I want to heal my childhood trauma. Why? Because I don't know, I've got patterns. Masan, the person says, as a child, I didn't receive enough love. Now I'm finding it difficult. Oh, fair enough. You've got a problem now. What do you want to do about it? He says, I need to go back and tell my parents you didn't show love to me. Oh, what are you doing? You're breaking your parents' heart just to feel a little bit better. You want to go back to your parents and tell them, why didn't you show me love as a child? Pass your heart has an issue, you're ready to sacrifice mom and dad just to feel better. Pass, do you see, even right now, most of us, we're trying to find a way to feel a little bit better. Hold on. What is the solution that the monajat is offering? In the first lines, there was a very beautiful secret there. It says, Ya laytane takhav to ma'ar rasule sabila. It says, I wish I had taken a path with the messenger. Pass, it means the messenger, our beautiful prophet, has a path that helps you out of all of these challenges. Not just in akhirah, even in this world. There is a way to live so beautifully, you don't need other people to make you happy. Alan, if I tell my friend, can we go out so that as a result of being next to you, I get some energy. And the moment masala, my friend wants to go, I'm like, no, come back. Oh, I'm saying, I need you. And even the hadith says, we're not internally satisfied. We're looking for satisfaction outside. And we're ready to use anyone. Khob. But there is another path with the Rasul that you have such beautiful heart, even when you're next to other people, you want to give to them. What is that path? The path is what the rest of the dua says. You gotta acknowledge that whatever I do will never be enough to get me to that beautiful level. I mean, these people, which is us, the dua is describing us, he says they're relying on their wealth, they're relying on their children, they're relying on their legacy. I'm saying we even rely on our own actions. But the line says one day you realize you didn't own anything. 
Even if I rely on my good actions, I'm still not following Munajat Amirul Mu'mineen. He says, there is a day you realize you didn't own anything. You didn't control anything. Everything belonged to God, which is what we're saying in the lecture series, Diga. Every good inside you is coming from God. Hala, the Munajat says, the moment you give this back to God, then suddenly you're in a different category. So all of these things that there are people who will have a difficult day of judgment or qiyama and all of this akhirah, you're in a completely different group. Even the munajat says, there are some people who on akhirah realize they have nothing and they're ready to sacrifice everyone. And there are some people who are safe. They have taken a path with the messenger. All of this does not even apply to them. Hello, what are they like? It says, they say, God, Antal Malik, Wa'anal Mamluk. You're the owner. I belong to you. If you have an iPhone, does the iPhone take care of itself or do you take care of your iPhone? You take care of your iPhone. Has these group of people who are with the messenger say, God, I, you own me. I belong to you, you take care of me. And tarrahim wa anal marhum. I mean, I'm the one who receives, you're the one who gives, pass, you take care of me. And tarrazik wa anal marzuk, you're the one who has rest, so you give it to me. The person who sees this, they have a completely different journey. Then even in this world, they have so much joy so much safety, so much peace. Why? Because now God is taking care of them. That not only these people are not going to be sacrificing their friends and family members to get out, they're willing to go out of their way to be there for others. Look at the Ahl Bayt. Every single one of them sacrificed his life, his time to get people out. Pass Munajat al-Amir al is saying, Insan, there's two ways for you to live. Either you want to take care of yourself and you will have so much lack which you would have to manipulate everyone and sacrifice everyone just to feel a little bit better. And even if you manage to do that in dunya, in akhirah, you can't. Or you allow God to take care of you and you have so much pouring out of you that you are in the world now as God's hand giving to people. Imam Hassan gives his wealth to people. Imam Ali his time to people. The farms to people. Hassan, it seems like Prophet himself, they throw stones at him. He's like, what can I do for you? You need the equation changes from a person who's in the world trying to make himself feel better to a person who is now in the world trying to make the world feel better. As if right now the world is in a mess. What does that mean? It means we don't have enough people who have reached that level that they are internally so full that beauty, peace and safety is pouring out of them so that they can calm the world down. This is the levels which are achievable for us. And maybe just by being a religious person doesn't mean we're there. Or I've mentioned many times, but then a person comes to Imam and tells him at the time of, I think it's Imam Sadiq, if I'm not mistaken, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, the ruler is very, masala naughty, why shouldn't we go and stop him? He says, and, and the person says, yeah, Imam, you have a lot of Shias, a lot of followers. But he says, baby, I know a lot of people think they're my followers, but I don't have enough who are like this. I think he says, I don't even have around 17 people who are internally so on such great terms with God that now they're in the world no longer to take care of themselves, but just to pour out, be there for others. He says, I don't even have 17, where the person says you have thousands of followers. 
پس you could even be a follower of اهل بیت you could even be a muslim but still not be among this group what is the key quality of this group they have realized what insan is many of us were told insan is something that should become good become a good person but munajat amir al mu'minin is telling us something else insan is something that can see god's goodness if there's knowledge inside me if there's piety inside me there's wisdom inside me there's hard work inside me if i own it and say this is mine i'm out of this category But there's another group of people who say, whatever is inside me, God's given it to me. And I have to share it with others. God says, now that you're loyal, I will give you infinitely. Look at it this way. Insan is the being that can receive God's goodness. Initially, God gives you a little bit. If you say it's mine, that's all you get. If you say this is from God, then God gives you infinitely. Infinite patience. Infinite love. Infinite wisdom. The hadith says they reach a place where fountains or, I don't know, waterfalls of wisdom are coming out of their tongues. You get infinite wisdom. But this is for a person who does what? You're Antal Hadi. You're the guide. Without you, I'm misguided. Even the knowledge I have right now, even the truth I have right now is yours. Hala, the question becomes this. This person who looks inside and sees the knowledge I have, the truth I have is not mine. God gave it to me. And I look at someone who doesn't have it. Do I say, You don't have it, or like, oh, God's gifted me something, but it's yours as well. Let me share it with you. But now, Alon Masaran, what do we do? We say, baby, I have found that Ahlebayt, for example, are true, or Islam is true. You haven't found out I'm better than you. As opposed to saying, oh, if God gifted me with knowing religion is true, it's not mine, ke. how can I share it with you? Just look at this attitude, it'll change. Now we're like, You guys don't know, you misguided. But a person who's with the Prophet says, no, 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 if I know God gifted, I need to share this with this person. Hope. Maybe we can pause now, see how the room is feeling, any points, any questions, how are we feeling? Please be comfortable, Dige. I want to know okay, is what I'm saying coming across, am I articulating Bismillah? Mm-hmm. Remember, so Salat, one of its job is this. Lady Fatima says, وَجَعَلَ السَّلَاتَ تَنْزِيحًا عَنِ الْكَبْرِ Lady Fatima says, I mean, Salat was something you go inside, less of you comes out. Many of us, we go to Salat afterwards like, look at me. I was already great, now also prayed. So there's more of us at the end. But Lady Fatima says, I mean, you went to Salat. Anytime you're saying, Alhamdulillah, think of the good you did that day. I say, you called mom and checked on mom. You were there for your wife. Alhamdulillah means in that moment, God helped you do that. Otherwise, okay, we've seen, if I'm on my own, I could break my mom's heart. Okay, we've all done that, unfortunately. Because now I go to Salat, anytime I say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, or Alhamdulillah, or afterwards, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Like, eh, t- today I was loving to that person. That was God showing love through me. Today I had a great idea at work. That was God who inspired me. So all of these beautiful things that you do, which is plenty, in your salah, it's a great opportunity to say, God, you did it. Hello? If you do that, is it a practical thing? Oh, it is. Just recently, we're discussing this in a workshop. And then later on, 
one of the ladies who was in the workshop, she told me, she said, baby, even in a business setting, oh, her job, I think, is like a, like a lifestyle photographer or something like that, photographer. She said, every now and then, a creative person, I would get ideas. And she said, I used to think it's my ideas. I was like, oh, I came up with a brilliant idea. And she says, sometimes I started following this. Eh, this great idea that came to my mind. God helped me find it. God put it in my mind. So she says, it helped me get to a level the moment this great idea that came, I gave it back to God. God, you helped me have this idea. It's not mine. You helped me. If it's good, it's from you. She said, as a result of doing this for a while, I got to a place where in a meeting, suddenly ideas would come to my mind that I would be shocked myself. Like, wow, where did that come from? I thought I'm creative, but not to this level. When she gave back two, three ideas to God, then suddenly way more came. So now she says, sometimes in a meeting, I say things, even photography stuff, uh, not even religion. But because she gave the good idea, she said, now I say things, I'm impressed myself. Like, wow, I didn't know that just before saying it. Pass it means God can speak through you to other people freshly. Even the hadith says, Jarat hikmah. So this is maybe one practical thing. Anytime you do something good, say Alhamdulillah, give it back to God. Not at all, not at all. If you look at it this way, anything good is God's beauty. What's wrong with wanting more of God's beauty? There's nothing wrong with it. Asan Quran says that. Quran says if you have issues with rizq, masalan, let's say you don't have enough money. You know what's Quran's prescription for that? It says, give mimma atahullah. It says, you, Alan, you have shortage of money. Look at what you have. See that's from God, give it to people. Then it will come much more. Because Quran itself is saying this. Okay, in any area of your life, if you feel like what you have is not enough, don't worry. Whatever is there, know it's from God, then more will come. If you have a little bit of knowledge, you want more. God says, say that even this little I have is from you. And then seek how much more it gets. Anyone else would like to bless us with their beautiful questions, points, remarks? Confidence, in the, again, is one of those things. Okay, is it self-confidence or God-confidence? I could be, I could be a person who, let's say, masalan, I find some confidence inside myself. I can talk to any person, be assertive. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Reza John. Allah, this one, if I say it's from me, I'm capping it at where it is right now. Maybe through with so many workshops I know, I slowly, slowly increase it. Although I increase it in a way that unfortunately has some side effects too. And it's sometimes when I try to increase my self-confidence, it's at the cost of some other qualities. But if I say, God, this much of it that is there is from you, then you will see that even that strength you find more inside yourself. It gets to a place, I was recently actually talking to another person, again, this is professional setting. Huh? He said, Javad, I'm at this level where, alhamdulillah, my career is taking off, and I'm quite comfortable, I'm quite confident, but now it's reaching a level where I'm like talking to these great CEOs of the world. Sometimes in a meeting, I get a little bit nervous. He's already a very confident guy, but he says, yeah, I things are getting higher and higher, like I'm talking to CEOs, sometimes I'm talking to countries, officials, so he at some point felt like his confidence is reaching a little bit its limit because now the kind of people he's meeting. I told him the same thing. The amount you have already, give it back to God. Now see what happens. Now he himself says, I can talk to any person in the world. I'm not nervous in the meeting. You know what I mean? Pass even in confidence, even in a career setting, the same rule from Munajat Amirul Mu'minin applies. Because if God is giving you confidence, the is automatic. If this person is a king, 
the richest person in the world, the most spiritual person in the world. God's giving you confidence. And yeah, does that make sense? Anyone else would like to? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me my certain example? I'm not sure I... I get you. How did they ask the same question from the Imam? Oh, okay, Imam, what do we do with Shaitan? This Shaitan comes to our heart even in corners we didn't know our heart has. Imam gives them, Imam bless him. He gives it the answer in two levels. He says, but it's so difficult. The, ex the example um, could be different things. It could be a temptation. It could be I get arrogant. It could be maybe I'm helping others to feel good, to feel real or whatever. Imam initially says, but there's nothing we can do about it. Shaitan is more powerful than you. And then he says, but you have a God. Go to God and then God will protect you from Shaitan. Pass even in this, what if Shaitan comes and I'm weak and all of that? Imam says, of course you're weak. You can't protect yourself in front of Shaitan. So even the task of protecting yourself from Shaitan, be like, God help me. Which if you go to Munajat Khamsa Ashar, Imam says literally the same thing. Allahumma ini ashku ilayka nafsan bisu'i ammara wa ilal khati'at mubadara. So Imam first complains that, God, there's part of me that wants to do bad. And then he says, wa'adowan yudhilluni, something like that. It's not just that my own nafs sometimes want to do naughty things. I've also got this enemy that I can't even see who keeps coming me, tempting me to do near... So Imam says, what do I do with all of this? A nafs that wants to do bad things and a shaitan that really helps him. Imam says, I take this to God and I complain, God help me. Allahumma inni ashku alayk. Pass even this, take it to God. Yani, when you come to this path of the prophets and ahl bayt, they say, whatever the challenge is, you take it to God. Hala, when you tell God, how does God solve it? There's a million ways. Maybe God sends a book in your life. Maybe God sends a friend who helps you. Maybe God sends you a teacher, a lecture, or in your own heart, he changes it. And it's the way God helps. It's a million ways. Maybe God helps you through a pious friend. Maybe God sends you a pious partner. But you know that God will find a way to help me in that challenge. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's directly in our heart. Sometimes it's through another person. Chob. Uh, any other questions, reflections? Beautiful point, beautiful point, beautiful point. So see, there's two paths to success. Oh. One path is work hard, grit, you need to kill yourself, come on, you can do it. Just find something inside yourself to get to that peak. Oh. And For some people, I mean, it works. Many athletes are following this. Many entrepreneurs, maybe many successful business people, right? They're like, I need to get there and I can't let even one day go by. So they look inside their life or their psyche, finding something they can use to motivate them. For many people, I mean, it's different. I don't know if you've seen that 
Michael Jordan video, after so much success, imagine like basketball almost at some point was equivalent to Michael Jordan. So you would think this guy is a very happy guy, successful and all of that. And then at the end of an amazing career, he gave this talk, and if I remember correctly, I don't want to judge him, although there's no judgment again. He said, I did all of this because there was this manager or coach or something, he didn't believe in me. I wanted to prove him wrong. Pastor, I'm like, you carried this anger inside you for so many years, and all of this, and you did amazing. But he said, I want to do all of this just to prove this guy wrong. And imagine carrying so much darkness in your heart to get to a place, for another person, this is again another real example, a very successful business person. He became very rich. He gave had his own uh, great company, Zoyna. And they asked him, what motivated you? He said, once I got into a flight economy class, and then I was passing through the business class, and I saw these guys sitting down, having their drink. And I'm tired, I'm going through them. I was like, one day I'll be sitting here watching people go. Has been this person managed to find something that motivates him? He got there. But I'm like, really? Imagine spending 20 years just so you can do that? Allah for another person, I mean, it could be, I'm not good enough, I need to do this, I need to do that. You know what I'm saying? There's a million things that can get us there. Or must another thing, must maybe one of us could have a better one. I need to provide for my family. That's at least a much healthier one. But I'm saying even if I think the task of providing for my family is mine, what if you fail? And we've had cases like that too. A person thought that's who I am and then it didn't work and I was like, why should my family love me? He was very successful, then he failed, he was like, Pastor, even if I think the task of providing my family is it's such a heavy pressure I've put on myself, I feel like my family are there because I'm doing this. My love is dependent on this. So I'm saying there are a million ways to become successful, but 99% of them have a side effect. Either you're carrying anger from your coach, or you just want to prove that I can sit in business class, or I'm good for my family. Oh look, God says there's another way. You still work as hard as anyone can imagine, maybe even more, but not because you think I need to achieve anything in the world, but because I know life is an opportunity to experience God's goodness. If, if there's a path in front of me, in knowledge or money or health, if I can get more of that, I get to experience more of God's beauty. I get to spread more of God's beauty in the world. Imagine a father who says, if I work on myself, if I provide more for my family, then my family get to see more of God's love. Pass with this intention, I work hard. Then if you do this, not only you are not working less than the person who's trying to prove others wrong, but now God gives you the motivation. God gives you the energy. God gives you the hard work. And one thing also that God does, God makes sure your life is balanced. So you're not focusing on one area of your life at the expense of other, which happens to many successful people. And the person says, yes, I got this, but then, yeah, my daughter, I haven't seen her in 10 years. So I don't know if you've seen that Steve Jobs documentary, the relationship he had with his family. Although, again, I'm not judging him. No one can be judged. These are all experiences that people go through. But so many people get to places at the expense of so many other levels of God says, if we go together, not only you're going to be the most hardworking person you can imagine, but all aspects of your life at the same time. Yes. Hope. Yes. Um, we have two questions. Oh, uh, very good. Uh, the first one is following on from the conflict uh, question. How do you balance being in conflict with God with the idea that we are not here to go How can we balance having confidence and giving someone advice? Because uh, wouldn't that imply that we know something more than that person that we're supposed to? 
احسن احسن very beautiful question ببین when we say we are nothing it's not to say it in a degrading way uh, we mean it in a mirror type of way okay, if you ask a mirror what you are it says hope i'm really there's nothing to look here but at the same time a mirror can reflect so many beautiful things so i'm not saying that insan is a nothing no nah. we're saying insan is a mirror that can show god's beauties hope how long confidence how can i say that i'm Nothing in front of God. Where does my confidence from? If you realize that in front of God you're nothing, then you become a mirror that you reflect His strength back in the world. All of God's power now is inside you. Look at the story of Prophet Musa. Prophet Musa is sent by God to go and speak to Pharaoh. So Prophet Musa is like, oh, this is Pharaoh. God, you realize who you're sending me to? Pharaoh. God says, don't worry. I will give you the strength to face Pharaoh. As God says, Musa realized that you are nothing in front of me, but then you can go face Pharaoh with my strength. I will give you the strength to face Pharaoh. So this is where the highest source of confidence is. Think about the story of prophets, by the way. Last night I was thinking about it. Even our own prophet. Imagine you're in a community that literally the majority of them suddenly go against you. You know how scary that feels? Imagine, for tonight, everyone here started hating me. Just think about that. That's how most prophets went through life initially. Because they were telling their people, there is a God, everyone suddenly went on their case. You think this can be handled with a confidence workshop? Everyone around you, even Masalan, uh, some of your own relatives now are after you. This is not something that confidence can help you go through. You can only go through this if God gives you strength. And you see all of the prophets go through this so beautifully. So that's with the confidence question. Um, and the second question was what? Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so the first question was, I think we answered, but the second one, I'll repeat it. I've accepted that Allah loves us. And he wants us to ask from him. Yeah. Uh, and not because we are deserving, but out of his mercy. Ahsan. Oh, that was for me. Beautiful. Oh, mashallah. That was at least three questions in one. Let's break it down. The first question was, um, you, okay, I accept that God is loving and I should ask from that and not rely on my actions, but from his grace. How do I do that? Well, let's pause here. By the way, it's so nice as well that that's how also Munajat Amirul Mu'minin ends with a, yani I really hope you don't think these are Sheikh Javad's ideas. Bobo, this is Imam Ali's ideas. Go around, tell your friends and family members. Tell the Munajat Amirul Mu'minin. How does it end? What was the last phrases of Munajat Amirul Mu'minin? After all of these things that Imam Ali says, Allahumma yas'aluka al-aman yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun, all of this at the end. What does Imam Ali say? He says, Irhamni bi rahmatik. God, show love to me out of your mercy. Wardha'anni. God, be satisfied with me. I don't want to be in that situation. Be satisfied with me because of what? Because, for I did this or I did that. It's bejudek. Wardhani bejudek because of your generosity. Yani, this is not my idea, huh? This is Imam Ali's idea. He says, if you want to be in that path next to the Prophet, 
You got to say, God, be happy with me, not because of my actions, not because I did this, but because you're generous. Out of your grace. How do I do it in the same way Imam Ali does? Diga? Just tell that to God. Don't rely on your actions. See your actions as blessings of God and tell God, I want all of these levels which Lady Zainab had, which Imam Hussein had, but out of your fazl. Now the second question, how do I get to a place where I see Bismillah rahman rahim Where I can look at life and see God's mercy everywhere. That's something God will do for you. You do the first part, don't rely on yourself, rely on God. The second part, God will do for you. If this Ramazan, Allah, I look into the camera because it came from the sisters. If this Ramazan, you really make this paradigm shift. I want to rely on God for my spiritual growth. Just wait and see what happens for you in this year. Levels which you would read about scholars or Fulan and you dreamt of them will naturally be given to you by God. Only in a matter of few months you see your life change. It's not a joke. It's real. If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't share it like this. Maybe in a story that if I say right now, you would be like, oh my God, this must be a masoom. In two months it could be you. But all it takes is what? Rely on God's fazl and grace. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Bless you. Alhamdulillah. And maybe finding God is as simple as this. So even last year we said this. And on delicious tea came to me. I can either only thank this beautiful brother and forget God. Or remember, ki, eh, Alhamdulillah, God showed me love. Alam, did I ask for tea? No. But this is what Karim means. Karim is someone who gives you things you didn't even ask for, but you, he knows you want it. I really wanted tea. Without even asking, Alam, it came here. Did I ask from God? He gave us. He gave. Hala, I could either let this moment go and just thank this beautiful brother or be like, now about God send this beautiful brother. Alhamdulillah. Bless this person and God who gave that love in his heart. As simple as this, you can find God in your life. That brother as well, now he can think, eh, what a beautiful thing I did. I manifested God's beauty in the world. And then he can find God in his heart too. We just witnessed God's action. As simple as that. Even, even last year I shared with you, when they asked Prophet Ibrahim, who is God, it says, the one who yut'amuni wa yusqini. God is the one who feeds me. God is the one who gives me water. Anytime he receives anything, he says, God sent it to me. So that was the second question. How can I get to Bismillah? I said, God will do that for you. You do your bit, which is give everything back to God. God will give you all the levels. And about the atrocities in the world, this one actually I'm so passionate to talk about. But we need more time. We need more time, and also, I thought maybe tomorrow I'll try to give the requirements in the talk, so that maybe in another night we can sit and talk together. Um, but, but it's a very beautiful question. It's one actually that I'm really passionate about. We're having so many smaller discussions about this. But maybe, inshallah, another time that we have enough yeah, time to tackle it, inshallah. Hope these were the two questions from the sisters. Pass, do you agree now? We can end tonight by just having the last uh, paragraph, maybe, or the last part from the du'a. But now, this time, I want you to really listen to it with this mindset. Okay, we are trying to acknowledge that all the good comes from God. Our task is just to ask for it. So maybe this time, let's read, listen with a little bit more meaning yet. So, Hossein John, where do you think would be a good place to start from? Should we go from Antar Rahman wa Al Marhum? Do you think that's a good part? Or do you have another place in mind? Let me see. <coughs> uh, 
um, maybe a little bit lower, I think it is. Oh, no, oh there it is. There, I think that's a good. Pas, just think about it. Dige, Masaran says, Antar Rahman wa Anal Marhum. You're the one who's loving. I'm the one who receives it. Ibn Yani, I'm not saying we're nothing, God. I'm saying you're something that can receive God's goodness. Receive God's love, receive God's guidance, receive God's knowledge. Look at it that way. And please, 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 pay very attention to how the monajat ends. That's your prescription from Imam Ali on how to get to the highest levels. So be mindful how does it end. Okay? I'll go silent and we listen to a beautiful recital. This is mine, I'm not sharing. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. مولاي يا مولاي أنت الرحمن وأنا المرحوم وهل يرحم المرحوم إلا الرحمن مولاي يا مولاي أنت السلطان وأنا الممتحان وهل يرحم الممتحان إلا السلطان مولاي يا مولاي أنت الدليل وأنا المتحير وهل يرحم المتحير إلا الدليل مولاي يا مولاي أنت الغفور وأنا المذنب وهل يرحم المذنب إلا الغفور مولاي يا مولاي أنت الغالب وأنا المغلوب وهل يرحم المغلوب إلا الغالب مولاي أنت الرب وأنا المربوب وهل يرحم المربوب إلا الرب مولاي يا مولاي أنت المتكبر وأنا الخاشع وهل يرحم الخاشع إلا المتكبر مولاي يا مولاي 
ارحمني برحمتك وانض عني بجودك وكرمك وفضلك يا ذا الجود والإحسان والطول والامتنان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب على سيدنا محمد وآل الطاهرين السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحدي مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي السلام عليك يا غريب الغربة السلطان أبا الحسن علي بن موسى الرضا كن شفينا وشفي والدينا في يوم الجزاء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولانا يا صاحب الأسر والزمان الامان 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 السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسحر الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن سلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا وصل اللهم على محمد وعليه الطاهرين um, the, the rugby will be closing in five minutes. Um, thank you everyone for attending. We'll also be holding discussion circles on the 24th and 30th, so please, we'd like to see you there. Asante.